So, a little while ago, I made a video that talked through the first couple of issues of the short-lived Miraculous Adventures comic book series, which ran for five issues, from July 19, 2017, to June 20th, 2018. And it was actually a Reddit post that got me onto this hunt to begin with. They posted a panel from the comic which was just... Ugh. My eyes, the goggles do nothing. Naked Marinette wearing a cardboard box, confronted by a bunch of heroes with kind of racist names. It just seemed so weird and out of nowhere, and so I took a deep dive into the first three issues of the comic to see what we could find, and they were not it. The first one, it was mostly inoffensive as far as I could recall. The story revolves around a dude getting mad at Adrian for defeating him quite easily in a game of lacrosse, and also because he's getting majorly bullied by his teammates, and so he gets akumatized and they battle, and from what I remember, the battle, which is the majority of the episode, the chapter, the issue, whatever you want to call it, was super, super lame. I'm pretty sure they kept doing these lame cutaways to reaction shots by the heroes, so you didn't actually see the fight very often. Regardless, for the most part, it was trash. And then after this, we came to the first two parts of the <laughs> Trash Kraken adventure, where our heroes go to New York to battle the Trash Kraken. And over the course of this adventure, Marinette has her clothes stolen, leaving her in her underwear or whatever. And then the next time, Dee transforms and is completely naked. So in issues two and three, it's back-to-back -back clothing humiliation for Marinette. And it's just, yuck, bro, yuck. This is sus. You know it, I know it, the whole damn world knows it. One time, I could think, hmm, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's just a writing choice that sounded better in their head. But two, it feels like a pattern, especially when you combine the context with her being naked, with this dude looming over her. It's just creepy. Anyway, issue two sees them fight the Silurus, Silurus guy. I don't know how you say it. He's a water villain. And I think the fighting here was actually much better. They bothered to show some of the action for once, which was nice. And so of all the issues, I think the second one was probably the best. The third one takes us to New York City. And it's just, it's just badly written. Like, it's actual dog shit. Sorry. Actually, no, I'm not even sorry. Like, who let it get to this point? Who let this go to print? We have Marinette naked getting confronted by grown men who are getting way too up in her business despite being heroes. And on top of that, these heroes have really, really whack names. Let's be real. Like, Ghetto Blaster, Ghetto Blaster, Public Enemy. And these are black people we're talking about here. That's what they're doing. Like, there's no chance the writers did not know what they were doing with this. There's a Chinese character named Shaolin Soul. Quick, what's the most stereotypical name we can think of so people understand she's a Chinese-American character? Oh, it's so bad. On top of those creepy and racist writing choices, it's just genuinely bad. Like, they keep trying to do this terrible joke of her being so French. It's a running gag, and it is not funny. It was never funny. Nobody's laughing. Why do they keep saying this over and over and over again? Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Like, the first time, and people in the comments did agree with me on this one, the first time they say it, it very much felt like they were making a quickie joke. Like, ha oh, they're French. That means they must be horny. And I was like, um, Thomas, other writers, are these not 14-year-old kids? Cool your jets, grown man writing this story. <laughs> For me, there are very few things that are more uncomfortable than 40-plus old men making sex jokes about young teens. And it's not that older teens would be much better, but it's even more uncomfortable when they're like 12 to 14. But then after the obvious sex joke, they just came out of nowhere at the weirdest times, to the point that I'm reading them and thinking, okay, what are you even trying to say here? The racist named heroes say it when she runs off. What do you think this means? Because I'm well and truly stumped. I just don't get it. Maybe my poor little simpleton mind is not able to grasp the complex themes and subtleties of this modern day Shakespearean epic. What the fuck is going on? Or perhaps it is simply drivel that was written by a poorly designed chatbot AI. Regardless, it went over my head. And so this brings us all the way to chapter four. At last, chapter four. And yeah, it honestly took me ages to find this thing. So thank you, kind Redditor, who found it for me. I skimmed this bad boy before I sat down to write this out. And oh boy, this comic is also pretty damn shit. Okay, so let's just jump into things, shall we? So we start off with all the heroes, as in Ladybug, Cat Noir, Night Owl, Sparrow. They're all grouped up together in front of the giant trash goop monster. And instead of actually attacking them, the monster's just standing there doing nothing. And our heroes try to come up with some sort of plan to take it down. Ladybug notices the doll thing, tells Cat Noir they need to grab it and destroy it. 
thinking maybe it's an akumatized object, a similar type of scenario to that. Which understandably has Cat Noir skeptical and asking why she thinks it would be one. Does Hawkmoth have an American cousin? And she replies, why not? Villains are part of one big family, after all, and I don't even know what to say here. If she's being legit, it's just, ugh. But if it's banter, well, it's just weak banter. That's sad. That's all it is, just sad. It makes me sad. I'm weeping over here. Somebody kill me! Night Owl then chimes in, telling her her plan's bad and she should feel bad. And that he, she, is it meant to be a man here or have they always been women? Because it feels like a very different character than the one we see in the special, if we're being real. But for now, we'll go with they until we know more. They say that they much prefer the original plan, which is to have the heroes nuke this thing and blow up the eastern seaboard. And I'm just saying, what? How are you going to make this rip-off Batman character and then fumble the one thing that makes Batman Batman? <laughs> that he's so deeply unwilling and unable to use lethal force ever, to the point that his rogues gallery is filled up with deranged serial killers who, well, let's be real, not to be really overly aggressive and dark, but the people that Batman fights are rabid dogs that actually deserve to be dead. They always break out of the asylum or prison and then they kill lots of people again and then he beats them up, and on and on it goes. And the whole point is that he knows they need to die, but he can't do it. He can't bring himself to kill them. It's his big thing. And then this budget version is just A-OK -okay with all of this collateral damage and civilian casualties to completely innocent people. What an absolute joke. And what's worse, Robin, oh sorry, Sparrow, reveals that not only does Batman agree with the plan, but it was their idea. What kind of superheroes are these people? So far, this garbage monster doesn't even seem that tough. Why such drastic action? Why not at least try Ladybug's plan? Batman is meant to be some super genius cerebral character. So smart and with such an iron will that he can contend with anybody. Even those with powers way beyond him fear the bat. This is just, it's just like reading a bad fan fiction where the best character has been absolutely butchered and neutered to the point that it's embarrassing to read. And how do they convince Batman to help them? By giving them the puppy dog eyes. Woof. That is one cursed ladybug. And so just like that, they get Batman's help, and all of them coordinate their attacks to try to defeat the sludge monster, with Sparrow straight up dying. Like, straight up gets gobbled. And whilst Ladybug's sobbing, and Cat Noir is also sobbing, trying to figure out what they can do, Night Owl, who is her mum, is just like, eh, what can you do? Like, <laughs> Look at any time Robin dies in Batman. Batman's always sad. What is this shit? Oh, my superheroes are the best superheroes. Shut up, Asterix. And I do have to wonder here, how does the reverse power even work? Because in the show, she uses her lucky charm, but she also needs to defeat the Akuma to do so, right? So, like, what's the strategy here? They're going to nuke New York from orbit and just hope that Ladybug can somehow reverse it all? This plot feels very half-baked. Also, when Batman's telling him it's time to move on from Sparrow's death, she's even making quips about how Cat Noir is supposed to be the funny one, so stop crying. <laughs> my daughter just died. You got eaten by goo. <laughs> Who wrote this? Fess up. So, the attack is about to happen any moment, and Ladybug isn't all about that. So, she lucky charms, she gets chewing gum. Batman tells her that some obscure chewing gum ball that was banned in the 1950s and is way too sticky and dangerous for newbies. She literally says, You need sturdy American jaws to chew these bad boys. Eat this. Feels like a parody of the show. Oh. What do you reckon the budget was for this? Whatever it was, it was too much. We then have another deeply, deeply sus panel. Oh no. Have you seen the size of this thing? It would never fit in my mouth. <sighs> that ain't right. Batman, surprise, surprise, is a woman. She chews the gum. They stick it to the yo-yo. They use it to grab the toy whilst Cat Noir blows up the sludge monster with Cataclysm. And Ladybug purifies the squid toy using her yo-yo and gives it back to the random dude before she fixes everything. And we learn a little bit about this mysterious sludge. Turns out the dude's been taking his daughter to the hospital and dropped her squid toy. And so he went sewer diving to find it, as you do. And when he found it, he was lying in a puddle of what I would say is probably urine and also has this mysterious sparkly black tar on it. And this dude, not wearing gloves or anything, just picks it up. Just picks up the mystery substance. I guarantee he was just going to bring it back to his kid like this too. She's in the hospital, man. Just give it a wash. Oh. And so they fix it up, head back to Paris, but not before handing over the mysterious substance that feels like the store brand version of the Venom symbiote. Good thing we have chapter 5 to continue this storyline with the mysterious black ooze. What? Oh, oh cancelled? What do you mean cancelled? And what do you mean issue 5 is just a compilation of webisodes? Jesus. 
Did they make it like this because they knew it was getting cancelled, or was it always the plan to have such a terrible payoff to this storyline? Because if that was always the plan, my god, that's very shit. How do you expect people to pay for this badly drawn version of something they could watch for free online? It is absurd. And really, it's just, it's sad and kind of embarrassing. These are official Miraculous comics. Official ones. You know what made comics a powerhouse form of media for so long? Superheroes. Superheroes and comics are like bread and butter, bro. They should always be able to work. But this is just trash. It has so much potential when you think about it. But then you see the end result and it's just this cringe. Just, just cringe. That's all it is. I'm, I'm cringing here. And on top of that, it's very problematic and creepy with most of the creepiness being directed towards the character of Marinette, who's 14 years old. Oh, she's just a fictional character, it's fine. It's not actually, it's actually not, because a man drew this, like a grown-ass man. It's weird. I just, I don't understand why these creative choices were ever made. I don't understand why it looks so cheap with such shit art. I just, I don't understand how this goes on sale. I really don't. If I saw this on Tumblr or something, I'd be like, oh yeah, it's a great work for an, you know, an amateur. But this is professional shit. Suddenly, I'm very understanding as to why this was cancelled. Oh, goodbye and good riddance, that's all I'll say. And so, not really much else to talk about. I'll just remind you that these have been my opinions. And now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of this comic series? Did you like it? Somehow. Do you hate it? Based. I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment and subscribe and let me know.